Can you talk a little bit about the process and how you get something so big, like the train that you did with your crew? Like, do you sketch it all out and then people fill it in, or everyone's an artist, and so you can just say, this is what I want to do, match it up? <laughs> no, that doesn't work like that. Uh, like, but, you know, like, my crew members start to call me a Nazi when I tell them, like, this is how we do it. <laughs> and, uh, um, but, yeah, they know they have to go with, with my plan on that point. Um, but they also, like, know that, okay, that's, that's what it needs to be done. And um, uh, I remember, <laughs> um, like, planning, planning this one, I said, uh, with another crew member of mine, Shu, we sat down and we, he said, like, what are we going to do on this? You know, and I, I, I just took that photo of that wall and, and the computer and, like, just made a rough plan and sent it to the other guys um, because I was thinking, okay, how how can I include the graffiti writers on on there? So it had to, like, I knew, okay, the best way is to have them doing pieces on the train. So um, for for myself, it's like to paint that 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 dragon thing is like, you know, I sketch it up and re-sketch it and like plan the whole thing and make sure that the shadow is too, like, far, in, uh, far enough away so it doesn't get too flat and stuff. So this is like the, the very complicated architectural thing you can say. And this is, this is only everyone is just sitting there and waiting until I'm finished for like three hours and I'm getting boys getting stoned and stuff. And so it's like, um, <laughs> don't laugh. <laughs> so I remember even like the, pl the planning process of um, um, choosing colors and stuff. Uh, was pretty hard because nobody was understanding what I was saying. It's like I need this, 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 and that gray shed shade for for this part, and uh, like we fill this in and that color, and like, and um, I remember the 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 window reflection um, I, we painted. I had really like I explained them like when we were sitting in my studio how we do it, and I was like, how the fuck? What is he talking about? And then like when we were on the wall, I was showing it, and it was. It was pretty funny because we had we had like some of us were like resketching windows for like ages. Like, oh, wow, that's not that's that's not right. You know, it's like so. It's like the good thing is with the spray paint you can change things really fast, but but you end up doing things like four or five times all all over again, and then like. But when they worked out how the reflection works and how easy it is, and um, um, if you have enough can control. Um, and they all have very good crane control, so um, that was that was pretty easy. But it was like it was a really funny process because for me everything is clear, you know. But getting it across when I when I tell uh, tell them how it works, I'm like, damn, I would have done it myself already. <laughs> and that that's that's the main problem I I have when I, I paint big murals. I cannot like work with any assistant really. Um, as long as he doesn't understand how how I paint my things, because it's uh, yeah, it's gonna look different, or it just takes forever. <laughs> and I'm not the kind of guy who like likes to take forever. <laughs> I'm wondering if you can share a little bit about what conversations you have with fellow artists about the move from sort of illicit street graffiti to commissioned works to more commercialized form of art and sort of how, how you feel about that philosophically. Maybe it's not a conversation, maybe it is, but if you could share. Yeah, we talk about that, but I've, I've been through those discussions so many times. Um, I'm the kind of guy, like I had, a, I still have opinions, of course everyone has, but I, um, for me it was always important to understand graffiti on every level, every level. Like also, so I've been doing it on a level because I wanted to experience on myself and find out what I like most about graffiti or painting on the streets or whatever. So I also love it on like every, every everything about it, you know? It's like, I appreciate the tagging. I don't, I don't mind, you know, as long as it's good tags. I have my opinion on tags, I don't, you know, I, I see the like I don't even see bad tags, you know. <laughs> That's the thing. Let's say to appreciate graffiti is like you have to understand what's what's it about. So I know what I'm what I like and I want to do, but I'm not 
I'm not the guy who like, judges every, anyone on his graffiti, really. I've done that, been through that. Like, everyone can do what, what he wants, I feel like. I, I, I look at stuff and I see people's motivation. And uh, I kind of like that. And everyone has this, everyone is like, everyone in, 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 in so many different countries, culture backgrounds, um, whatever, how he grew up, you know, we all like, like to paint graffiti and everyone has his own kind of connection to that. And I think that's what keeps it really alive. I was wondering, what do you think about the current situation in Italy? Because Blue is over painting all his murals as protest. So do you consider over painting your murals too? Or what do you think about it? <laughs> The thing with my murals is they get painted over anyway. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, well, it happened a couple of times. Um, well, I, I've, I've been reading about the whole issue, and um, um, I don't really know everything about it, so I, I'm not the one who likes to talk about it too much if I don't know all the background with the whole thing. But um, I think he's making a point. But it's also like, it's very dangerous where all this goes right now. Because the problem is, even if they take buildings down to like sell it in the galleries, especially in like places where people were like, the same people were hunted before from the same kind of people, it's, it's weird because Italy is not the place to do that kind of stuff. Because Italy is like, it's like this, like, ah, ciao ragazzi, ah. So, you know, so this is, this is like, this is a, this is a very, this, in, especially in Italy, I think it's just right, right now, you know, but they're gonna, they're gonna get lazy again with things, you know, and, and things will get painted. Whole Italy gets destroyed constantly uh, because the, like the, the security of the system is not built on anything like, the Nazi Germany, you know, it's like it's like not like a not same as Spain. It's not a German-minded um, place. So, so there's way more space for graffiti and the whole, the whole. I mean, that was that was the reason why Blue was um, uh, able to paint those things in the first place. Um, the problem is with him like destroying his mules just because they end up on the art market somehow or whatever that problem is. And right now, it's like, it's like. Um, I, un I totally understand what's going on, but I'm not sure if destroying it is the right way to go. It's like, I think, I think um, it's, it's just how he deals with things. Uh, and I understand, but you know, like I don't, I don't think you should rip down a building just because the art market is so awesome. Um, but you know the problem is, what, and it happens here in Auckland. It happens in San Francisco. It happens uh, pretty much everywhere. That um, or in New York, especially, I feel like people are mad at the muralists painting walls because, like, you know, it, everything gets so like hyped up price-wise or whatever. But it, it, it's just an excuse, you know, like value of a building goes up because someone painted it, it's just an excuse to do it anyway. And that's one point, but the other, the other thing is, I mean, that the problem is if we all destroy our own pieces now, and like if, if or other people destroy our pieces because of money, there's no, there's no street art out there anymore. And we, got, we all, I know and mo most of people don't really appreciate the graffiti too much, some not at all, Many, um, but that's what you're gonna end up with. Us artists going out there and fuck you all. <laughs> no, this is what it happens. You know, it's a reaction. You go out there. And I don't. I don't care anymore. You know, I go out and paint, whatever, and fast and dirty. <laughs> now this is what happens. This is what happened in New York like a while ago, or in other places. This is just, the reaction is gonna be uglier. And nobody can say anymore if it's art or not. It's still gonna be out there forever. Can you talk about your name, Nychos, why you go by that? It's, it's really funny. Um, 
because it, I think it was like 17, I think. And and back like before when I was younger, I was like a, like I was drawing of like dinosaurs, or I was learning drawing perspective a lot with drawing uh, fighter jets, for example, or whatever. You know, I was just learning about this, and like then there was like Jurassic Park was in in the, in, in movies and stuff, and and. Um, I was I was a big fan back then. That like already like looked way more on skeletons back then, uh, and uh, I learned so much about skeletons and like anatomy already before even realizing it, just by drawing uh, those 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 animals, very very dead animals. Um, um, and uh, I remember when I started to paint uh, more graffiti, I was I was looking for something I really liked a name, and um, the the Greek name of the Velociraptor is uh, Dinonychus, and it means the terrible claw. And I just got rid of the dino and kept uh, the Nychus and the, yeah, changed the U to an O and stuff. So it also like fitted to my name, and I was like, this is. And the uh, color combination, uh, the color combination, uh, uh, the, uh, the letter combination is pretty awesome too. So that's how I ended up with, uh, with that. And um, I also got busted with it. And then I was like, oh, I stick to that name. That's 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 me. And uh, um, yeah, and like back then, I didn't even think about painting like any anatomy kind of stuff or like slice things open and stuff. And then a uh, couple years back, only like two years back, I think, it's like that's pretty interesting because I, my name is the Terrible Claw, and I slice things open, so it's like it fits, you know. <laughs> Um, yeah, it just, uh, it all came together. <laughs> Thank you, first of all, for our Easter bunny. Um, <laughs> I walk past that parking lot every day, and I really enjoyed watching it appear day after day. Um, while you're here this time, are you working on any large-scale murals? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we were talking about it. There's no um, real plan yet. It's because um, I'm... I'm here working on my my next show in New York at John of Levine Gallery, and um, that takes a lot of time of me right now. So that's that's like um, priority at the moment. But I'm halfway through, and I think um, if there's still time, I have to go back to to Austria uh, mid of May. And if there's still time, the last two weeks, I think I will bang one out. Yeah. <laughs> well, how do you maintain? The scale, because I was going to ask you if you sketched everything first, but then I saw that you had a plethora of sketches. And, and my other question was, how do you monetize them? And now you just mentioned having a gallery show, so that's sort of, I mean, that's, that's your job, right? You're not, you're, you're not getting paid to do any of these murals. Yeah, uh, here and there I do, yeah. It really depends. Uh, I get paid for it, but I like to organize them myself too, so, you know, sometimes I don't. If, if I get all the the materials and the, like the cherry picker and the permission uh, many times it's it's uh it's fine to me but it also like it's always about the deals are different so um um yeah that's i get i get paid by this but like that's what i'm saying like the gallery the show is priority at the moment i need some money <laughs> <laughs> So you're represented in New York, and they sell your work to legitimate collectors, yeah. and that's usually how you make it. Yeah, this, this is how I make a lot of money. I spend like pretty much uh, four months a year in the studio, I guess, like only studio, and then then I travel again and paint more. And uh, well, the paintings I do, um, especially the murals, are mostly related to what what's coming up next, concept-wise. So. Um, for example, I, I just painted a, a huge rubber ducky in Bangkok. Um, that's going to be in the show in New York, for, for example, on a much smaller scale. <laughs> yeah, this is so I'm like coming up with a concept like mostly right after one show, and then like okay, this is the show is going to be in six months. The next mural is only going to be like towards that. So the next one is uh, very much about kind of like pop icons. And um, 
Yeah, so I just uh, put um, the dissection of Spider-Man online. Uh, I'm working on that one. And there's going to be loads of really funny stuff. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's very, like some famous or dead people <laughs> uh, dissected and stuff. Um, and things from like pretty much like uh, pop icons from the 70s or 80s. I also go into portraits, portraits a, a lot, which wasn't really my thing before, but now this is what, what I'm learning with it. So I paint portraits and dissect it, and uh, that's, that's a good, good thing for me, and I also try to do it on, on walls now. So this is how it always goes. This is, it's all really connected. Where did you study art? Uh, I did not study art. I, had, um, um, I went on a graphic design school, back home in, in Graz, it's my hometown where I come from before I moved to Vienna. Um, but I learned to use Photoshop. <laughs> uh, but that's it, yeah. Everything else, this was like, I was sitting by myself in the deepest depths of the borough and draw. I'm from New York and uh, there's a lot of gentrification happening across the city. I'm from specifically Brooklyn. And the biggest one for me that stands out is Five Points. So do you think gentrification is actually killing that movement for the, the youth to see uh, I feel like you know, pieces like that? No, right now it's more, it's more the movement is used to, to take over, I feel like. And it's killing it at the same time. I feel like people are mad at muralists painting their, their buildings, especially in New York. And that makes me feel weird <laughs> about New York. Like, um, and uh, like because I have friends uh, from New York, they like they get spit at and stuff, yeah, you know? like while painting a wall. So, and uh, so this is, this goes in a very strange direction. And New York actually should be happy what they had like in the 70s. And I don't know, it's weird, and we just need to see that it's not going to happen everywhere. But I don't know how to do it. I will work it out. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Nigel. Please give Nick a very big hand. Thank you.